Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Stebbing. Today is a Stash with Stephanie day where we come out with a brand new back order friendly pattern that's been inspired by our latest collection, which you can see behind us, that just shipped out to our Stash with Stephanie subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, don't worry because we have kits available for you while supplies last. If you are a subscriber, then you can log on and grab your finishing kit. You've got a 24 hour head start before we release this video to everybody else. So great grab that fabric. And if you are not a member yet, make sure you join so you can get first dibs because we sometimes do sell out before we open it up to everybody else. I really am in love with this month's pattern. It's a deceptively simple. I believe there's only nine steps to the entire pattern, but it looks super complicated when you put it together just because of how all of the uh, triangles come together. And it creates secondary designs when you put the blocks together. It's a little bit off set with it, but it's nothing that's hard. It's nothing that you can't do if you're a confident beginner or for an intermediate quilter, it's going to be a very fast project for you. And if you are a fan of bonus triangles, we've got some in this pattern. We're going to have one of our team members make up a coordinating throw pillow from some of those bonus triangles that we'll show you later in another video. Uh, but it's super fun, super cute. And let's take a peek at this month's fabric collection before we get going on the tutorial and show you this really fun, really easy pattern that your friends will think you spent hours and hours and hours on, but really it's quite simple. All right, so we're gonna take a peek at this month's fabric collection. If you're a Stash with Stephanie member, you've already received this in the mail. If you are not a member and you would like to join, then you are gonna want to uh, sign up, but you're not gonna get this in the mail. We've already shipped that out. So you are gonna want to order a kit, a full kit. The finishing kits are for folks who've already received their bundle. It turns their bundle of 10 fat quarters into a full quilt kit and they get special discounts, 20% off any additional fabric they want to purchase both for what we call those finishing kits and then also for the uh, any additional yardage you'd like to purchase and the pattern is absolutely free for that all right i'm loving all these really bright colors my team was really excited when they saw this and we started cutting it up because it's just so bright and cheery and i think with everything going on in the world right now that's important to have that in the projects that we're working on and the colors really coordinate very well together you can see as i have this wheel going that they really have included the colors in everything we have our more lighter blues which you can see throughout in the lighter prints and the darker prints and then these limey greens there are only three of them but they really help accentuate and make everything else pop and even though we only have one truly pink print you, there are elements of pink throughout all the others that make it feel like it's not out of place it looks like it absolutely belongs because it's in here 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 this one has it uh, this one has it I mean it's throughout this whole collection and I just really love how Amy did the mixture of color it really is bright and fun and even though we have a couple of really dark prints there's a really a lot of bright stuff going on in it so it really is absolutely fabulous and I'm excited to get sewing with it again if you are a member you're gonna get today's pattern for free you get 20% off the additional fabrics you need to turn your 10 piece fat quarter bundle and to a full kit and then you also get access to all of our previous Stashing with Stephanie patterns for free. If you would like to join today then you will get that pattern for free, all the other patterns for free. You'll get a discount off of uh, Stashing with Stephanie um, fabrics going forward but you're going to want to get the full kit because the kit uh, uh, the finishing kit is just for folks who've already gotten 10 fat quarter bundles of this collection and you don't have that so you're going to need to get all 15 in order to make today's quilt all right let's get started and have some fun sewing this super simple pattern that doesn't look like it so we're going to trick all your quilty friends so there are just two types of units that we're going to use for this entire quilt and they're both pretty simple we're going to be doing, doing stitch and flip flying geese now if you're following along with our triangle master class this is not the way that we're going to be doing it for the triangle master class i prefer the four at a time flying geese method but for this one we need our background and our uh, fat quarter fabric to end up on the same side for each one and you end up with mirror image blocks with the four at a time so it just won't work for this one which 
means we have to have those bonus triangles. Now for some people that's really exciting. It means they can have some extra fabric for another project. For some of you, you never wanna do anything with that small and you know what you do? You give it to a friend who likes to do things that small and they can make something beautiful with it. That's what I do with all of my tiny little scraps. Uh, my team here, just there are a few members who absolutely love playing with them and they get all those tiny little goodies. All right, so let's get started. It's really pretty simple. It's a great way to make flying geese if you haven't done it before. All right, so I've got our large piece for the body of our flying geese and then I've got my two wings, one from the fat quarter and one from the background. I'm gonna flip those so that the wrong side is up and I'm just gonna draw a line from corner to corner down both sides. Now, when you do this, it's very, very important that you are drawing right out to that corner because if you miss that, and you draw off it, then you're probably not going to sew to the corner either. And then your flying geese aren't going to turn out the right size. Now I'm using a friction gel pen here. They come in a lot of colors. Our black one ran out after many, many line drawn. So we're going with pink, which I feel like is appropriate for this. So you can see I've just drawn it straight up and down. I've done it kind of dark here, so it'll show up on the camera, but one nice little line is perfectly fine for this project. And you don't need really a lot of special tools either. Your six and a half inch square ruler and a friction gel pen or mechanical pencil will do just fine for everything for this project. All right, so we're gonna set this to the side. We don't need it just yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to place my smaller square, even with the left side, it has to be the left in order for everything to work out, of my rectangle. And for this one, a lot of times when you see me do these, we're sewing a scant quarter inch away from the line. With stitch and flip, you wanna sew right on the line because then when we flip it over, everything's gonna go straight to that corner like that. So I'm just gonna stitch right along that line. You can chain piece and I recommend that you do because we've got a lot of these to make. Now, normally when I sew these, I've got my machine set up in a scant quarter inch sewing position. For this one, I like to leave my needle smacked out in the middle. I find it's easier to sew down a line when it's in that middle position. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Now, some of you, if your machine might wanna eat those first corners. So if that is the case for yours, you might wanna start off with kind of a spider is what it's called, or you can start off uh, sewing at the rectangle end instead of trying to feed that corner through. Because sometimes those feed dogs, they, they wanna chomp chomp on your corner. All right, so you would just go ahead and put another one straight through and chain piece away as you're going on this. I'm just doing one for the video tutorial, so we're gonna clip those threads. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler and we're gonna place the quarter inch mark on the line that we drew. And that's going to give us a quarter inch seam. So that way I can just trim this off and then I've got a bonus triangle. I recommend that you do this with your rotary cutter because one, we have a lot of triangles. It's gonna save you a ton of time. And two, then you will have evenly sized pieces. So that way, if you do wanna do something with these bonus triangles, they're all gonna be the same size and it'll be easy to create something new and fun with those extra bits. So now we're gonna press the seam open. By pressing seams open, it makes it really easy to get super accurate points, which is especially important for flying geese. So I'm just flipping it over and with my fingers, I'm opening up that seam a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my iron and I'm putting the nose straight down that center and I'm just going across it because I wanna get that nice and flat. Now you're looking to make sure that it's super flat and that there isn't a wiggle in there somewhere. So if there's a wiggle on this side, it means there's a pleat on the other side and it won't be the right size. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and press from the other side as well. All right, we've got one half done, and now we're going to take our background square and we're gonna lay it even with the other side. Now, there really isn't any need to pin any of these. As long as you've cut everything accurately, everything should be sized up really well and fit well together. The only reason why you'd wanna pin is if you're super concerned or you're finding that these are slipping out of place and your points aren't matching up at the bottom, then you might wanna put a pin across here and across here, but it's gonna save you a lot of time if you can just have a stack of these and a stack of these and just put them together as you sew. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna start over here instead of at the corner. It'll be a little easier to get it going, but you do wanna make sure that you don't accidentally flip any of those seams going the wrong way after we work so hard to press them open so that your point can be nice and flat when we're all done. All right, I'm just sewing right on that line again, straight out to that corner. 
All right, now we're gonna go ahead and trim and press again. So when I do stitch and flip, I typically don't trim my flying geese down. I just leave them as is. You certainly could if you wanted to, but that's it. That is pretty easy peasy for our first unit. Now the second one is stitch and flip, but we only have to do one side so it's even faster. So for this one, I'm taking my background rectangle and have that right sides up. And then I'm going to take a fat quarter square that I've already drawn a line down and line that up on the right side. And again, it has to be the right side. It's very important what side these go on. That way the design turns out in the block in the end. All right, so now I'm just gonna stitch down, trim and press. And then this one is good to go and we're ready to assemble our block. Pretty quick, right? All right, so now we've got our two units that are ready to be sewn together. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together and turn it to the side because I'm gonna be stitching down this area. Now, I typically don't pin these. What I'll do is I'll line up my corners at the top and then once I get a couple of stitches in, I'll line them up at the bottom as well. And then if I have to do any easing as I go, I just sort of, Give it a little, little tug and we should be good to go. But there's one very, very important thing that you need to know. So that way your points will show up every single time. Now you can see we've got a fabric here and a fabric here and it forms this kind of little triangle here. Now I wanna be sewing one needle width to the right of where that tip is, right where I made that mark. And as long as I do that, then you're never gonna miss a point again. Now this might not be exactly a quarter inch away from the edge of your seam. Don't worry about that because nobody's gonna see the inside of your quilt to know that you've fudged it just a little bit, but they sure as heck are gonna notice if your points aren't where they need to be. All right, so I'm sewing with that quarter inch stitch and I got going maybe about a quarter of the way through. Now I'm gonna line up the points in the back and if I need to, just give it a little bit of a tug and that will help everything come together and fit together well. When you get down to the end, just move your finger to the side like that and that helps you maintain your quarter inch stitch all the way down. We're gonna press every seam open in this quilt. That's gonna make for beautiful, wonderful joins and you just need to take a little bit of time, make sure you open that seam up with your fingers ahead of the iron and I'm not sliding the iron, I'm lifting it and setting it back down again because that helps make sure that all these points are where they should be. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the other side here and now we're ready to assemble this into a block. All right, so all your units are gonna look like this one with the triangle in that left, the little tiny one, and then a little tiny one on the corner. What we're going to do is we're gonna turn them around. Maybe we won't use that one there because it's the same fabric. And we're just going to have this pinwheel going around and it kind of looks like one of those whirly gigs that you have out in your garden, hence the pattern name, a whirly gig. And these little bits are gonna form a lovely little secondary design that almost looks like a border when we assemble our quilt blocks together. And this is so cute because at this point, we just have a four patch to do. It's super fast, super simple, but look how complicated that block looks. It looks like we did a whole bunch of tiny little complicated triangles, but we know that this was super simple so far and it's gonna keep being simple as we go next. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I pin these together because we have to make sure that we get these points together and these points together. So that way we have a beautiful little center with all of our points coming together super flat. All right, so I'm just gonna start by flipping these right sides together. And then I like to just pick it up. And you can see from the top that we've got fabrics going in both different directions there. And I always just kind of look at it on top to make sure that my seams are right on top of each other. Then when I'm satisfied, I'll put a pin in the right side of the seam allowance, which in this case is going to be on the bottom, and that will keep it together until I'm ready to sew. So when I'm stitching this, I'll start off sewing, and I won't stop until I've got my needle down in the first half of that seam allowance where this green is. And then that kind of acts like a pin and holds everything in place and only then am I gonna remove this pin to finish off the rest of my block. Now for this one, it's gonna start off at the top because that's where our point is. So we're still gonna put it in the left side of that seam allowance, but it's gonna be right at the beginning. So I'll put it underneath, keep that pin in until I get a couple of stitches in and then we'll be able to just keep on going down the block. Let's get sewing.
sleeve seams open as well, it's really important to lift and drop that iron down because we have a lot of seams at this point. We don't want to press anything going the wrong way. I'm going to give it a good press here as well. And we can see that we've got some really great joins. We've got points exactly where they should be there. And everything is looking very, very good here. I'm very pleased with how this block is turning out. We're going to do the same over here. All right, everything's still looking as it should. I always recommend laying your pieces out again to make sure you're sewing the right parts together. All right, for this one, we're gonna match these points here, but really the rest of it, there's nothing to match because we don't have a triangle to match here. There's nothing to match this to, and same on the other side. So really, as long as we get this point together and you match up your corners, you're gonna have a really good looking block. So it really is not that complicated of an assembly process either, so it really goes super super fast because you just need that one pin all right so we're going to flip these guys right sides together and i'm going to zoom in so you can see my two penny method in order to get those points exactly on top of each other and have a perfect center join all right so we're going to put a pin right in the middle of where these are all coming together you can see we've got a tiny little point there and there and i want it right at the tip just above where everything is coming together now i'm going to find that same point here and i'm going to put it right at the tip of that triangle now it's important to note that sometimes these might edges might not line up when you do this this one is just a smidge to inside than that one but that's okay because again nobody's going to see the inside of your quilt so it's off a smidge on the inside but it's right on the outside that's what we're going for all right so now i kind of hold this going straight up and down by pinching it right next to it with my thumb and forefinger and then i take a second pin and i pin across and that's what's going to hold everything in place so then i can remove that first pin and now I can sew all the way down, stop with my needle down, so just to the side of where all those joins are, and then we are gonna have a pretty good looking block center. All right, let's get sewing. All right, I always slow down as I'm coming to that center, and I just wanna stitch just to the right of where everything is coming together. And only then, once I've got my needle, like it's almost straight in the middle of the seam allowance, that's when I pull that pin out, because I know that that needle is gonna hold everything together and keep all of our hard work intact. All right, now I'm gonna line up those corners at the end here. And sometimes I'll just like throw a finger down in the middle if there's any easing in that needs to happen. And then if you just take a finger and put it to the side, you can keep that quarter inch stitch nice and accurate all the way through. Now centers like this one are pretty much the reason I press all my seams open because we're gonna have a really great join. Our points are gonna go exactly where we want them to. It's not gonna be super bulky, so you can quilt right into it later. And it really is gonna lay super nice and flat. But you really have to make sure you are lifting and pressing that iron. Go ahead and spend a little bit extra time on that center. And a lot of times when we used to teach in person, I would see people like really pushing down on that iron and you don't have to. The iron is heavy enough, you just kind of have to let it sit there and it will do its job with the heat. You don't have to press down on it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and flip that over. Now I'm gonna take my spray mister, give the block a good mist, and it's gonna get even flatter. I love this. I'd use this instead of steam in my iron because I feel like steam distorts the fabric and eventually every iron I put water into spits and gets your fabric gross. This way I can just spray a fine little mist of water so you don't get water droplets and I'm able to get super flat, super beautiful results that way without having to risk ruining my iron or warping my fabric. Oh, that looks so much better. That looks really, really good. We've got points where they need to be. We have all of our joins coming together really well in the center. Now, nine times out of 10, I'm really happy with where things are. And in the 10th time, it's usually close enough to where once it's quilted, it won't matter. But I do that two pinning method pretty much every time I do triangles and I keep my pins in place as long as I possibly can to keep everything in line. Now, I'm gonna show you one more thing just because this is where the pattern gets a little cool and just elevates it with something that's really really simple to do so your pattern is going to tell you to leave a set amount of your half blocks 
not sewn together, just leave them as halves. And that's because on your even rows, you're gonna start it off instead of with a full block, you're gonna start it off with a half block and then you'll end it with a half block when it's all said and done. What that's gonna do is it's gonna offset everything and it's going to make it look like these uh, triangles are just going down the side. Like we have this really cool sashing, but it's just part of the block design. So it's really cool. It creates a really fun secondary design and it's really, really neat when it's done. But I'm gonna show you how to pin these blocks together because it's just a little bit of an extra uh, care that you can take and it doesn't take long. I was able to get an entire row completely sewn together, pinned and pressed in about 15 minutes for the lap size. But I'm gonna show you how how I do that here. So I'm gonna put this underneath as though I were pinning this one and this was an even row. So I'm starting with this and then moving to here, but this will work too if you're joining full blocks as well. All right, so we're gonna flip these guys right sides together. And you'll notice that things look a little different. Here we have a triangle is going off. Uh, it's about a quarter inch away because it's in the seam allowance. This one, we don't have that. It's going all the way to the bottom or to the bottom of that edge or to the edge of the block. And we wanna make sure, and then it's, it's opposite over here. We wanna make sure that these all come together. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna go ahead and pin my center of my block because that's easy. I got two triangles coming together. I can use the same two pinning method that I did for that block center. It's gonna go together great. Just put your pin at the very tip of that triangle. Find the tip of the other triangle and pinch that so that the needle is going straight up and down and then slide your pin in the right side of that seam allowance and that'll keep those points right on top of each other so they're going to be fabulous when we sew them together. This one's a little bit different. Now if this is hard for you to do, if it's hard for you to eyeball, all you're going to do is you're going to take your friction gel pen and your ruler and you're going to mark a quarter inch mark about a quarter inch away or exactly a quarter inch away from the edge and that'll give you a nice little spot to aim for. What I did for all mine, and it worked out really well, is I eyeballed a quarter inch away from the edge and I stuck my little pin in there. And then I found where the tip of my point was right here. So now I'm gonna stick that in and I'm trying to make sure here that my edges are nice and in alignment, and they are. If they're not, then it means that you did not do a very good job eyeballing your quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and still put my pin in that second side of the seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see it for the other one, see how that works. All right, so here on this side, I've got my triangle right here. So I can go ahead and stick it in right at the tip of where all that comes together. Now here I'm gonna eyeball, which I think is right about here. It's about a quarter inch away. So I'm just going to put it right in the middle of that seam allowance, that pin tip, about a quarter inch from the edge of the fabric where we're gonna be sewing. All right, and it looks like I did a good job because my edges are lined up. If they're not lined up, then it means that you did not eyeball that correctly. You might wanna start uh, tracing your line on the back side, uh, so that way you can just poke it through where that quarter inch crosses that seam. All right, so now I can remove this pin and I'm good to sew down this and create our row. I usually don't pin my outside corners unless I've got triangles coming together. So I just line them up as I start sewing. So we're gonna stitch down. Now this one, I can't see that quarter inch. So if you had marked it on the other side, you would aim for that. I'm just eyeballing it and hoping for the best in this case. All right, I'm gonna slow down as I come here so I can be just to the side of where that triangle is so that all my joints come together well. Now for this one, I can see this tiny little triangle. So I'm aiming for the right side of that. It should be about a quarter inch away from the edge. Now at this point, I'm gonna line up those corners so that way I've got a nice straight seam all the way down and saves me from having to pin them. All right, we're gonna give this a good press. And again, keeping those seams open and lifting and pressing that iron. I'm always gonna hit it with that spray mister as well whenever I have really big long seams like this or when I'm pressing a block for its final press. And oh man, am I pleased with these joints. These are coming together really well. This one's really well too. This one's just a hair away from the edge, but you're never gonna be able to tell that when it's all quilted. So I'm really happy with how this looks and it's gonna be really fabulous as a finished quilt. 
Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's tutorial on Whirly Gay, the latest Stash with Stephanie pattern to come out. It is using Josie Jean from Clothworks and it is so pretty, so bright and fun. And you can just see the swirling in the garden somewhere. We've got the little flowers, the bright colors, and it is just so bright and cheery, a really fun thing to work on right now. And super easy. We're just doing stitch and flip flying geese and this one you only have to do half of it. So it goes together really fast and really easy. And I hope you have the confidence to get those points together exactly where they should be. And you don't need a lot of special tools. You probably already have everything you need in your sewing machine and your stash of tools and notions. And don't forget, you have bonus triangles that you can make another coordinating throw pillow or something with, or you can give them to a friend who enjoys working with smaller little bits. Well, don't forget to go check out Stashing with Stephanie. The members get 10 fat quarters a month for $29.99 plus shipping. And with that, they also get a free pattern that I designed that's inspired by the fabric. So this month's uh, fabric inspired me to make the Whirly Gig pattern. I thought it was a really great way to show off all those fun prints by putting it against this really bright white on white print. And then also they get first dibs on getting additional fabric so they can turn their bundle into a full quilt kit. They get 20% off that quilt or that additional fabric and they can also get yardage as well. Free patterns, not just for this one, but all the other patterns that we've come up with. And you get a 30% discount on my book, Fat Quarter Workshop, and we've got a new one coming out soon that they'll get a discount on as well. All right, so check it out. It's a really great club to be a part of. We hear all the time uh, that it's a great value for our folks. And we've got a fun Facebook group where people are showing off the things that they finish that you can join when you're a member. So check it out, have some fun with us. And until next time, happy quilting. Cool